In this short lecture, I want to make a couple of points about how Python is used in this course and actually about learning Python or any programming language in general. Knowing how to code is not a binary state where at one instant in time you don't know how to code and then at some later instant you do know how to code. All coding is, is writing out a set of instructions. So fundamentally, at some level, we all know how to code. We're all just at different levels of proficiency. The more proficient you become, the more elegantly you can write code. But everyone more or less can code. The best way to get better at any new skill, including coding, is by doing it. So coding tutorials can get you started, but your skill never really develops until you start working on a project of your own. In this course, we're not going to have any specific lectures on Python syntax or data structures because, frankly, I don't think it's necessary. This course won't make you a Python developer, but it will equip you with enough tools and knowledge to start using Python in your everyday work or study as an engineer. And once you start using what you learn here in your everyday work, you'll see your proficiency and ability rapidly increase. It's remarkable how little you actually need to know, quote unquote, before you can take the training wheels off and start writing effective code that gets the job done. You're going to see that firsthand in this course. Although we won't have done any formal how-to Python lectures, by the end of the course, you'll be confident in firing up a Jupyter notebook and coding together a structural dynamic simulation. As I said, you should also start to see where there are opportunities to leverage Python elsewhere in your study or work. So to sum up, you don't need to know Python to take this course. Some familiarity with any programming language would be an advantage, but it's by no means essential. In essence, we'll be using Python as a tool to perform dynamic analysis and model dynamic structural behavior. In terms of Python, you'll learn what you need as we progress through the course. So that's all for this one. In the next lecture, we'll get Jupyter up and running on your computer.